Hello class. In this short video, we will discuss about three different types of special purpose diodes. Zener diode, Varactor diode, and a light emitting diode. So in the last class, we kind of touched on this Zener diode. This is the symbol of the Zener diode. It's looking like a Z symbol for Zener. So this is going to be an anode. This is going to be a cathode. A normal diode is going to have only a single straight line on the cathode side. But a Zener diode will have a Z looking symbol. So that's how we can identify whether it's a normal diode or a Zener diode. The basic application of the Zener diode is as a voltage regulator because of its capability to maintain the voltage across the anode and cathode as constant as possible, irrespective of the input signal changes or the load changes or the temperature variations. So it can maintain a specific voltage across the across its terminals. If you look at the page number 118 from the textbook, you will look at a series of uh, list of Zener diodes with their capability of maintaining a specific voltage. And this specific voltage is referred as VZ, which is nothing but the Zener voltage. The intention for this Zener diode is designed to only operate in the reverse bias. So that's the main major difference between a normal diode versus a Zener diode. A normal diode intended of operation is in the forward region, whereas a Zener diode's intended operation is in the reverse region. So meaning that when the Zener diode is in the reverse bias, it can maintain a specific voltage across its terminals. Again, refer to the page number 118 from your textbook in order to look at various types of Zener diodes. So in this case, I'm going to refer to 1N4729A Zener diode. So if you look at that Zener diode from that page number, it has a typical VZ of 3.6 volts. So this one consists of 3.6 volts across its terminals when the diode is in the reverse bias. So down the line, you can look the VZ value, typical VZ will increase us because there are uh, various types of Zener diodes that can handle very huge voltage levels. The reason for that is a Zener diode is a heavily doped with a very, very thin depletion region. So because of the doping concentration is going to be much higher than a normal diode, it can able to withstand very huge voltage when compared with a normal diode. So let's look at the characteristics of a normal diode. So VI characteristics. So this is going to be the forward bias region. So where the current will increase drastically as long as the voltage across the diode reaches 0.7 volts. You will see there is a, so this is the voltage across the diode referred as a forward voltage. This is the current flows through the diode in the forward bias. That's a forward current. So if you remember the reverse characteristics, so that's a reverse voltage. So if you increase the reverse bias voltage, remember that when the diode is in the reverse bias, the voltage across the diode, it's an open circuit. It's always going to be the source voltage. So the current changes. So this is called as a normal breakdown for a normal diode. So this is normal PN junction diode. So this breakdown here, is called as an avalanche breakdown in general. So this breakdown is called as an avalanche breakdown, which occurs in both rectifier and Zener diode at high reverse voltages. It's basically telling you that the diode is no more usable. So once you reach, so for example, for a normal diode, if you remember the 1N4001 diode has a PIV rating of 50 volts. So meaning that if this diode reaches 50 volts in the reverse bias, it basically breaks down. So that breakdown is called as avalanche breakdown. So both normal diode and Zener diode exhibits the avalanche breakdown. But in addition to the avalanche breakdown, Zener diodes a Zener breakdown as well, which occurs at the low reverse voltages. Avalanche breakdown occurs at high reverse voltages, Zener breakdown occurs at low reverse voltages. So let's look at the characteristics of Zener diode and 
find out what is this Zener breakdown means. So this is the characteristics of a Zener diode. So if you observe, it is very similar to the normal diode. So in the forward region, it still works as a normal diode. So when it comes to the reverse bias, remember that the intention of the Zener diode must be used in the reverse bias to act as an voltage regulator. So as the reverse voltage increases, the reverse current remains very small up to the knee of the curve. So as you can see here, this is going to be very, very small voltage. So that reverse current is called as a Zener current or IZ. So once you reach this Zener breakdown, then that's where the current increases rapidly. But Zener breakdown is essentially constant. So remember that its application is to maintain a constant VZ. For example, if I plot these characteristics of Zener diode again, in the forward region, it is going to be same as a normal diode. So you still need that 0.7 volts. So there is nothing difference between a normal diode and a Zener diode. But in the reverse bias, let me consider this 1N 4729A. So if you look at the textbook page 118, you can look at that. The typical value of VZ is 3.6 volts. So what does that mean is in the reverse bias, if you keep on increasing the reverse voltage, it's not going to give you any current. But once you hit the VZ of the diode, let's say if I'm using this particular one, so let's say if you keep on increasing and I'm putting 3.6 volts, then that's where I'm going to see a drastic change in the current. So it will allow the current. So during the reverse bias, so until you hit that VZ, you can look at that the current is almost zero. But once you cross the VZ of the Zener diode, that's where you will see the current is going to be maximum. A normal diode will not do like that. Right, so this breakdown is called as a Zener breakdown. So Zener breakdown occurs whenever the reverse voltage reaches the value of Vz. So that's where the Zener breakdown occurs. So for example, if I look at this circuit, I have a 12 volts connected to a 1 kilo ohm resistor and 1N4729A Zener diode. So if you look at that, this diode right now is in the reverse bias condition because that is the cathode, this is the anode of the diode, that's the positive of the source, this is the negative. So the diode is going to be reverse bias. And if I observe that input is at 12 volts, and from the theory we learn that this 1N4729 has, so the textbook says this has a typical value of 3.6 volts Vz. So because the diode is reverse bias and the reverse voltage is greater, so as soon as this diode is reverse bias and crosses the VZ, and if I observe the voltage across the Zener diode is approximately 3.54 volts. So what happened to the remaining voltage? So I have 12 volts and this Zener is reverse bias. Across its terminals, it consists of 3.54 volts. The rest of the voltage should be appeared across this resistor which is nothing but that 12 minus 3.54 so which is nothing but approximately 8.45 volts right so it is a type of voltage regulator as you can see here as soon as the input voltage is greater than the zener voltage it will maintain a constant Zener voltage no matter what. So it will maintain a constant output voltage and it will drop remaining voltage across the resistor. As you can see, this one kilo ohm resistance is dropping 8.45 volts across its terminal. So it is very important to understand the resistor we pick must be withstanding very, very high power ratings because if we choose a normal power rating value, so let me consider another example. In this case, I'm choosing 1N4764A Zener diode. If you look at the last line from the table in the textbook on page 118, you can look at the VZ of this particular diode, 4764A is 100 volts typical. So I'm applying a 150 volts 
So the first thing we need to look at, okay, whether this xenodiode is reverse biased or not. So that's the cathode, this is the anode. Yes, this xenodiode is reverse biased. So the input voltage is greater than the Vz. So that means no matter what, the voltage across this xenodiode is going to be 100 volts, typically. So what happened to the rest of the voltage? The source is 150 volts. The Vz is 100 volts. So the rest of the voltage, 50 volts, must be dropped across this resistor. So the voltage across the resistor is going to be 50 volts. So the power rating of the resistor must be carefully chosen because that resistor is dropping very, very high voltage. So for example, I got this VR. Let's, let's say I want to find out the current flowing through the resistor. So the formula for current is V, which is the voltage across the resistor over our 1K. So, so 50 over 1K, 50 milliamps of current. So I know the voltage, I know the current. So what I can get is the power. Power is V times I, 50 volts times 50 milli. So you will get 2.5 watts of the resistor you need to buy so this one kilo ohm resistance must be able to withstand at least two and a half watt the resistors that we use in the lab are 0.25 watts so obviously if i use that resistor in this circuit it will eventually burn out that will damage to the rest of the circuit right so it is very important we need to understand because the rest of the voltage will be dropped across that resistor. So the power rating of the resistor must be carefully met. So this is a, another comparison of Zener diode at a various input voltages. Again, I came back to the 17492A, which is having a 3.6 so Zener voltage. If I look at this circuit, in this circuit, the Zener diode is forward biased. So positive or negative of the diode. So the voltage across the diode, if I'm measuring, it's a 552.26 millivolts. Remember that a Zener diode in the forward bias region will act like a normal diode. The next one, I flip the orientation of the diode from the previous one. I keep 10 volts. So in this case, the Zener diode is reverse biased. When the Zener is reverse biased, it consists of 3.6 volts. And the multi-sim reading says that I'm reading 3.53 instead of 3.6. Again, that's the, with respect to the theoretical and practical discrepancies. Next one, I didn't change the orientation of the diode, but I increased the input voltage. So what happens? So first thing you need to identify, okay, is this reverse bias? Yes, it is reverse bias. So as long as it is reverse bias, it is going to consist of approximately 3.6 volts. But in here, again, the diode is same orientation as the previous example, but the input voltage is reduced. Input voltage is 2 volts. The VC of this diode is 3.6 volts. And it did not cross the value of VZ. The input is, doesn't cross the value of VZ. So meaning that this Zener diode acts as an open circuit. And what I'm going to see is simply 2 volts, which is nothing but the source. Again, remember from the characteristics, you must cross, the input source must cross the value of EZ, then only it will act as a regulator. The next type of diode is called as varactor diode. The major applications of this varactor diode is going to be in tuning circuits. For example, when you're tuning your radio stations, AM or FM stations, so when you're tuning means that it automatically changes the frequencies. It always operates in a reverse bias. So that application is a little similar to the Zener diode operation we just learned. Remember the Zener diode intended region of operation is in reverse bias. Same thing goes for the Varactor diode. So before we get into what this Varactor diode, we need to understand again the concept of capacitors. So let's draw a capacitor symbol. So this is a capacitor where you can see that a capacitor consists of two parallel plates. So this is one plate, this is another plate. So what is going to be there in between these two plates? If you remember from the operation of capacitor, 
there is going to be a material is going to be present in between and that material is a an insulator so this capacitor let's say for example that's the positive one this is the negative so this capacitor will not allow any flow of current from this side to this side because there is an insulator from the basic formula of a capacitor c equals to epsilon a over d d is the distance between the plates so for example i can increase the distance between the plates so that means i'm going to put a lots of insulating material in between right so this in here is the distance between the plates a is the area of cross section this epsilon is nothing but the material that we use as an insulator. So that epsilon will tell something about that insulator or what type of insulator it is. So from this relation, if I increase the distance between the plates, so from here to here, I increase the distance between the plates, the value of the capacitor will go down. So as the distance increases, the value of the capacitor will go down. So the varactor diode, the major application of the varactor diode is it's a voltage controlled capacitor. So it is based upon the concept of the depletion region of a reverse bias PN junction. So let's look at this PN junction diode from the basics of diode. So I have a P-type semiconductor material. I have an N-type semiconductor material. P-type consists of lots of positive. If you observe the p-type and very less negative and type consists of lots of negative very less positive now if i observe there is a junction in between these two and that pn junction is reverse biased right now because if you observe the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the p-type positive connected to the end type so the junction is going to be reverse biased so for example if i increase so i put initially one volt and if, if i'm trying to increase this reverse bias voltage let's say for example from one volt to two volts so what happened to this depletion region is remember when you increase it this depletion region will widens so for example right now that's where the depletion region is so what you are eventually doing is you are creating a gap or depletion region where no more transfer of charge carriers will take place so the electrons will not go from one side to another side because there is a depletion region so if you keep on increasing it so instead of two volts if you put three volts so the depletion region will get wider and wider so what you are eventually doing is you are creating a capacitance remember that the capacitor is in simple terms it is nothing but two plates separated by a certain distance so if you keep on increasing this reverse voltage the distance between the plates will increase so if you observe again from the formula for a capacitor if the distance between the plates increases the capacitance decreases so how i am increasing the distance between the plates is by increasing the reverse voltage so by increasing the reverse voltage so if i increase the reverse voltage the distance increases if the distance increases the capacitance decreases right so that's why this is called as a voltage controlled capacitor so this is the symbol for a varactor diode so as the reverse voltage increases the depletion region widens and increases the plate separation which is nothing but the distance so this is the formula so the distance increases capacitance decreases and vice versa i can also decrease the distance i can also decrease the distance and increase the value of the capacitance the next type of diode is an led or an optical diode so it's a type of diode so meaning that when it is forward bias it will conduct when it is reverse bias it will not conduct when the diode is forward bias the electrons cross the pn junction and recombine like a normal diode so free electrons in the conduction band has more energy than in the valency band because free electrons can move easily through the material that definitely consists of very very higher energy 
So the energy between electrons and holes corresponding to the energy level of a visible light. So the major difference between a normal diode versus an LED is the material that makes these diodes is going to be a photosensitive material. So during the recombination of these electrons and holes, a visible light will be appear. So it could be invisible too, depending upon the, again, the type of material. And those are called as photons. In the current, we call that electrons defines the flow of current. In the light, we call as photons. And the emitted light is going to be monochromatic. So far, we know that an LED, if I pick a red LED, it can only emit red light. But nowadays, you will see various types of color changing LEDs, RGB. A single LED, you can control the colors. So let's look at what's the differences between the normal diode versus this LED. The forward voltage of this LED is usually, if you remember that, a silicon diode has a forward voltage of 0.7 volts, meaning that as soon as the voltage across the diode reaches 0.7, it will start conducting. But an LED's forward voltage is going to be larger than the normal diodes. And this range will especially depending upon what color of light it is emitting. For example, if you look at the page number 137 from the textbook, the second table, basic characteristics, look at the first line, forward voltage. Forward voltage typically 1.3 volts, maximum 1.5 volts. So that's the voltage across the diode. And on the top table, absolute maximum ratings, if you look at the reverse voltage, it's going to be only 5 volts. A silicon diode has a reverse voltage, for example, approximately 50 volts, if you remember 1 and 4001 series. So this is for a silicon diode. An LED will have a less amount of PIV than the normal diode. So its forward voltage is greater than the silicon diode, but reverse voltage is less than the silicon diode. See the symbol for a light emitting diode. As you can see, it's a normal diode symbol. But there are two arrows pointing out that tells you it's a light emitting diode. The diode will emit the light. There are a wide variety of applications used in the seven segment displays. So for example, in the lab, you see the multimeter. You will see that each and every digit itself is a seven segment display. So each digit consists of seven LEDs. IR LED transmitter and receiver, that's also an LED, which is a typical example is the remote control. When you look at the front side of the remote, you will see an LED, but that's an infrared, invisible light. So there are various applications of these LEDs. Thanks for watching. That will conclude this lecture.